It's an angle bisector. It's a ray or a line or a segment that bisects an angle. So it's, that's pretty self-explanatory. Well, <clears throat> what we need to understand is that when you have an angle bisector, any point on that angle bisector is equidistant from the sides of that angle that's bisecting. But we made sure that we knew that we were talking about a point being equidistant from two sides of a triangle or sides of an angle. You have to know that you're talking about this perpendicular distance. You have to know that you're talking about the perpendicular distance. And what we talked about last class was that's just the universal rule that we all follow. That's just the universal rule that we all follow. That if you have some point P and you need to figure out like how far away is it from a line or a segment or a side of a triangle, um, there's a bunch of different lengths that you could measure. Now all of those segments I just drew, they have different lengths. So what the universal rule is, if we need to find the distance from a point to a side of a triangle or to a side of an angle or a line or a ray or what have you, it's got to be perpendicular. That has to be the perpendicular distance. So when it's talking about a point, Uh, that is equidistant from these sides, you have to know if that's the perpendicular distance. So if you look down at number six, I'm oh, sorry, number five, my bad. Look down at number five, it asks, can you conclude if this ray is the angle bisector? Well, this is six and that's six, so those two segments are congruent. But do we know if that's the angle bisector? Why not? We don't know if that's the perpendicular distance. You have to know if that's the perpendicular distance. Okay, because that's like someone saying, <clears throat> here's your line, here's a point, and here's a point. Well, this distance here is six units, and then this distance here is six units. So those are the same distance away from the line, right? It's like, well, no. Like, if you're going to compare that, you need to be talking about the perpendicular distance for both of them. So that's, I mean, this is an extreme case. Like, obviously, those aren't the same distance away. But um, remember, you can't just assume things. So you can't assume that that's perpendicular and that's perpendicular. So be careful on those of problems for your angle bisectors. <clears throat> Um, and then here, number seven, eight, and nine, very similar questions. You're just, can you, what, what can you conclude about these segments or these angles? For this, you know that this point, even though it's not labeled, like we don't have a name for it, but this point right here, we can see that it is, talk about the perpendicular distance, and it's the exact same. So that point on the angle bisector, apparently it is equidistant from the sides, Therefore, you know that this must be the angle bisector. So we know that this angle is congruent to that angle. So we'll set those two expressions equal to each other. And then here, uh, very similar problems. I mean, you're told right here that the angle bisector, so that means that those two points, uh, it was its equidistant. Um, so, but the next page is where it gets a little bit more challenging. I know that we've discussed this before. But the next page is where it gets a little bit more challenging. So please turn to page uh, 92. Uh, so, <clears throat> item not, uh, number 10, 11, and 12, those are just like the other uh, side. But number 13 through 8, 16, this is where we finally get a whole triangle with all three of the angle bisectors rather than just dealing with one angle. Um, so... We talked about a couple of these, did we not? We talked about number 13, okay. And so what I said was, <clears throat> um, you need to be able to interpret these diagrams and go based off of the given information. Well, it clearly says that this is the in-center. So you know point G is the in-center. Well, that's where all of your angle bisectors meet. Well, one of the notes that you should have is that the in center is equidistant from all three sides of the triangle. Do we have that written up at the top? You don't. All right, that's what we need to write. 
in center is equidistant from all three sides of the triangle. Um, okay, so it's equidistant from those for the sides of the triangle. So remember, you have to know that you're talking about that perpendicular distance. So in all these diagrams, 13 through 16, they show you that perpendicular distance. So you have got the distance from G to D and G to B and G to F. Those, that's the distance, perpendicular distance, from the in center to all the sides. Well, we know that the in-center is equidistant from the side. So you know that all those are congruent. Same thing here. P is the in-center. So that distance and that distance and that distance. It's equidistant from all three of the sides. So if you notice on these two problems, you're asked for one of those. So you're asked for the length of segment BG. Well, that's one of those congruent segments. Here you're asked for the length of segment JP. That's one of those three congruent segments. So if you find one, you got all three, okay? Then, for all of these problems, what we're going to have to use is the fact that what kind of triangles are being created in these, uh, in the big triangles with it in center? So what kind of triangle is that? Or this one right here, or that one right there? They're all right triangles. Every single one of these triangles, of these pieces, there's six of them in here, and there's six of them in there. Every single one of those triangles are right triangles. So if you're missing a, uh, a side length of a right triangle, what are we going to use? What theorem are we going to use to solve for a missing side length of a right triangle? Pythagorean's theorem. Okay? They're going to give you two sides. One, two. One, two. Even down on the problem below that. They're always going to give you two side lengths of one of these right triangles in this diagram. So here you go. One, two. Those are two side lengths. One, two. Those are two side lengths. You need to solve the, for the third using Pythagorean's theorem. And then you can solve for the variable or whatever the question is asking for you. So do we do number 15 together? All right, let's try that on our own right now then. Okay? First, identify the triangle that you have two lengths of. Outline that. Trace it. Do something. First, identify the triangle that you have two side lengths of. And I'm talking about one of those right triangles in, the, in that big one. <clears throat> All right, so for number 15, if I find the, tri the right triangle that I know two sides of, it's this person right here. So what are we missing? What are the legs of the hypotenuse? Legs. What are the legs? Okay, so I know that the Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, if I'm missing one of the legs, then that's either a or b. That's that value. So I'm just going to call this length a, the distance of s the length of segment ln. So we have a squared plus... 48 squared is equal to 52 squared. <clears throat> so I'm going to type in my calculator, 52 squared. So I literally just do that, 52 squared, that gives me 2,704. Then I know that I have to subtract 48 squared. So I'm going to hit minus 48 squared. Is that what I'm going to type into the calculator? And what do we get? What do we get? 400. So all I've done is subtracted 48 squared from both sides. And that equals 400. Just let the calculator do the dirty work, though. Then, how do I get this variable A by itself? Square root. So I'm going to take the square root of A squared and take the square root of 400. What do you got to do to one side to do to the other? And so this is A is equal to 20. So that's my missing side length of that right triangle, but I'm not done. Because I figured out that this was 20, but we are tasked with finding the value of x. Well, right now, 4x is representing this length here, that's n, which is the in center, down to um, point m, it's that perpendicular distance. 
So how? What are we gonna do from here? Set what congruent to each other or equal to each other? How do I know that four x is equal to twenty? Because of the in center. Hold on, what does Liam say? Should be at the top of your page. So that in center is equidistant from the three sides of your triangle. So I know that all three of those distances, the distance from the uh, in center to all three of the sides, that has to be the exact same. This is equidistant. So since you found one of those lengths, you found out that was 20, well that means this is 20 units and that's 20 units. So yes, x is equal to 5. Okay, so um, next class, which is Wednesday, um, you're going to have a quiz over angle bisectors, and these problems will be on it. And also, it'll cover medians, and so that's what we're going to talk about right now. You need to get out the point of concurrency chart. So it's this guy right here. We're going to get out this chart. We're going to add some new notes to the back. Right now, it should look something along these lines. It should, you should get a good amount of information on there. <clears throat> First thing we're going to do is draw a, a fairly large triangle. This is how big mine is. Because we're going to draw some segments inside and we're going to write some things on the inside of this triangle. So it needs to be big enough for you to draw on the inside and also write on the inside. And we're all going to label this triangle the same exact way. The vertice on the bottom left, on the far left, we're going to call that point A. So you're Leftmost vertice, just call that point A. And then up uh, to the right from there, we're going to call that point B. And then below to the right, we're going to call that uh, C. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to pass out rulers, but I want you as accurately as possible and as quickly as possible. I want you to uh, get a rough estimate of where your endpoints are for the, sorry, your midpoints, your midpoints, sorry. Locate your midpoints for all three sides of your triangle. So I've got mine there and there and there. These are just estimates. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you should be able to estimate where these midpoints are. And then we're going to label these midpoints certain letters so that we're all on the same page. Your midpoint of segment AB, I want everybody to call that midpoint point M. The midpoint of segment BC, I want everyone to call that point N. And then the last... I want you to call the midpoint of segment AC, let's all call it point P. So we're all on the same page. Even your, your triangle looks a little different than mine. We have segment AB, segment BC, segment AC with their midpoints. We know what we're talking about. Okay. Quickly flip over that chart and let's read about our next and final um, special segment of triangle. It's called the median. So on your chart, uh, the medians are the very, very first one up at the top. So we're going to learn and read about it. <clears throat> first off, the definition. A median, it connects a vertex, so it starts at the vertex, and then uh, goes to the opposite side's midpoint. So that's why I had you locate the midpoints.